Joining us now, Congressman Brad Winstrup, a member of both the Armed Services and Veterans Affairs Committee. He also serves on the Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence and was a combat surgeon in Iraq. Congressman, good to have you with us. Uh, Breedlove was early in, uh, in, in sounding the alarm on Putin's ambitions and capabilities. Uh, he sounds, if anything, more concerned today than when it all began. Well, it, he does sound more concerned than when it all began, and he should be. You know, the president spoke out very vociferously when this all began and said that we will be supportive of Ukraine. But I don't think that's what the Ukrainians are feeling right now, nor is their president. And when he came and spoke to Congress, he said, we need more than MREs and blankets. We really need help here. And I don't think that Mr. Putin feels threatened at this point. If he doesn't feel threatened, uh, and NATO seems to be in utter disarray, the member nations are not demonstrating any appetite whatsoever to stand up against his aggression, and certainly President Obama is not. Uh, it is, a, is it a fait accompli? Just fill in uh, your target, Mr. Putin, you win. Well, I certainly hope not. You know, I think we've talked about this type of thing for a while. Uh, people are seeing opportunities around the world and trying to take advantage of what they perceive as American weakness and the weakness in some cases of our allies. I see the Ukrainians really wanting to put up the fight, and we should help them with that and let them do that. At the same thing, at the same time, there are things that we can be doing diplomatically with that region of the world to help their economies, to help them grow, to make them stronger, and to make them less dependent on this on Russia. Congressman, there are times I have the strangest feeling when I talk to members of your committee uh, and uh, other leaders uh, uh, on the House and Senate side uh, that they think that somehow the legislature is going to influence diplomacy, influence the commander in chief, when it has become patently obvious over six years that you, you guys have no influence whatsoever on him or the direction of the country. Uh, I would say that on many aspects, not only on foreign affairs, not only on military decisions, but on so many things. There's very little engagement. You know, I, I never planned to be in Congress, but as I look at what I observed out of Washington over the years, there were many times presidents I didn't necessarily agree with, but they came to the table and they discussed things, and they did so for what they felt was in the best interest of the future of the country, and I don't see us having the discussion. And, and to go back even further, I think a very telltale sign that, that is sad, if you go back to the State of the Union last year, two years ago basically, when the president said, if Congress doesn't act, I'll act without you, and the Democrat side of the body stood up and applauded, they told the president, we don't mind being irrelevant. You go ahead and do what you want. Uh, we're yeah. just here for the ride. I don't know what their constituents think about that. Well, their constituents must, uh, must be somewhat uh, uh, pleased because those are people who sent them there. Just as your constituents and those of the Republican Party must be utterly confounded. It's as if the November midterm elections had no effect at all had meant nothing because Senator McConnell says we surrender on illegal immigration. We'll give you two votes and do what you want. This really isn't a constitutional crisis and never mind. Just go back to uh, your uh, constituencies, be quiet, and we'll take it from here with the Chamber of Commerce and the Business Roundtable. Are you guys kidding? What's now, the you deal? know what, you, you, you hit it on, on, on the head there. And then really, this is not about immigration. This is about the function of this body and the function of our government that has been in place for so many years. If the president can do this, what is next? I'm in favor of discussing immigration and coming up with a long-term immigration plan, secure our borders, decide how we want our legal immigration system to look. I, we need to have those conversations. I mean, I point out. Four bills out of judiciary that are the bulwark of any intelligent plan in the national interest to reform immigration and secure the borders, and, the, and your leadership ignores it. Uh, everyone seems to be ignoring that reality. The, the good lot plan is a great plan and would solve the problem. Well, I, I think you're, you're right on with that. If you look back at it, though, we've always said, listen, we really can't implement anything without border security. We have taken that action in the House. If you remember last July, we did that. We did not go home in August until we got that done because we didn't want somebody no, saying we're not acting. 
You well, know, so I think that it's a step-by-step -step process, but more concern is this executive action and just being able to run right over Congress yeah. and therefore the voice of the American people. Your, your, uh, your caucus met, your, uh, your conference, and you, you tell us, uh, is your leadership standing uh, or, or is he going to hold uh, Senator McConnell's hand and jump off the same uh, bridge of surrender? I did not get that impression today, I can tell you that. I don't know what's going through the speaker's mind, but I did not get the impression that he's ready to just go along with that today, uh, nor are most of the members ready to just do that. Like I said, this is bigger than immigration. This is about yeah. the function of our government for a long, long time. Absolutely, and whether or not the imperial presidency will be held to this, at least, this uh, state rather than something far more expansive. Congressman, always good to talk with you. We appreciate your being here. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Congressman Brad.